The act has just restarted, but I only had two weeks to try and hit Radiant because the next season of my coaching program was about to start. Hey guys, it's Kumpeki here. And in this video, I'll share with you guys the four strategies I use to hit Radiant in two weeks with a 70% win rate. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And if you're also interested in getting coached by me and a team of Radiant coaches to rank up five divisions in six weeks guaranteed, message me the word climb inside my Discord server and I'll personally reach out to you. Now, without further ado, let's get started. If I'm trying to speed run my way through Radiant, I knew that playing consistently was going to be extremely important. Every single loss meant that the number of games I had to play went up. In order to play as consistently as possible, I came up with some strategies. Let's start with the first strategy. I was only going to play initiators unless someone else insta locked the role. In previous episodes of Climbing to Radiant, I mostly played duelists. However, I knew that if I wanted my games to feel consistent, I couldn't rely on my teammates to properly use your utility, no matter how well I tried to communicate with them. It happened to be that playing double initiator was meta, so insta-locking an initiator wasn't going to be a problem at all. I knew that by playing the initiator role, I can consistently create impact with correct utility usage, and I wouldn't always have to rely on my aim. If other people insta-locked initiators, I just went back to playing duelists and we won most of the games because we were all comfortable in playing our roles. I'm not saying that you need to be playing initiators, but the point is to have a set of agents you're comfortable on for each map. That way, you can have consistent impact in all your games. And this brings me to my second strategy. I tried to IGL as much as possible. Because initiator utility is so powerful in gathering info and creating plays, it was easy for me to be an in-game leader and call out plays for my team. However, you don't have to play an initiator to IGL. You can still IGL on other roles by asking your team to use certain util or explaining what you plan to do for the round so they can help you. Sarah, can you hold your stun? If they start coming towards B main, stun towards B main. If they make presence A main, stun A main, okay? As an IGL, you have to understand what type of composition your team and the enemy team has. Don't all tap during the game's loading screen, but pay attention to every single agent. Ask yourself, does the enemy team have a heavy util comp with agents that have strong crowd control utility, such as Rays and Sage? Does your team have a rush comp with agents that can quickly take up space together, such as Jet, Sova, and Sky? Once you've identified the agent compositions, the second thing you want to do as an IGL is to have your team play for your team's strengths and the enemy's weaknesses. On the defending side, if your team has a rush comp, you want to take a lot of early aggressive fights to take early map control. If you play too passively sitting around the bomb site, the enemies can easily overwhelm you with utility, and you're not going to be able to hold a site. But if your team has a util heavy comp, you can play passively around the site and wait until the enemy starts to execute, and that's when you can dump your utility back at them. As an IGL, it's also very important for you to quickly adapt to how the enemy team is playing and figuring out different solutions. People in rank want to give up by the time it's 0-6. Heck, even 0-3 after losing against a bonus. But if you don't let your emotions get to you, you focus on what went wrong and come up with how to avoid the same thing from happening again, you can present a solution to your team and prevent the enemy from snowballing their lead. I won many games coming back from a huge early deficit. A few minutes later. This brings me to my last point about IGLing, which is manipulating conditioning. You essentially condition opponents by repeating actions in a predictable pattern. I first assess what predictable plays my teammates are making, then I try to assess how quickly the enemy team is able to react and adapt to our predictable plays. There's no need to change a play that's worked fine for you if you see that enemies aren't able to come up with a counterplay. The moment we get shut down though, after two rounds of pretty much doing the same thing, I try to think of several factors. Where, when, how many enemies were there, and where did they use what utility at what timing. Based on what I know and the information I gather, I can call for a different plan instead of repeating the same predictable pattern. Now the third strategy that I implemented during my climb to Radiant this act was only taking necessary risks. Yeah, this sounds super obvious, but from what I've seen from players even in Immortal, people make dumb plays all the time. There's a huge difference between taking necessary risks versus unnecessary risks. Here are some examples of what I mean. Number one, there's absolutely no reason to push out by yourself in a 3v2. Instead, you would only want to push out if your team is down in numbers and you're trying to isolate a 1v1. Number two, there's absolutely no reason for you to peek first if you don't have first contact and you're not in a position position where your teammate can trade you immediately. It's really important for you to identify who is going to peek off of each other. Number three, 
There's no reason for you to take fights on site when your team has so much utility to get enemies off the bomb. Pay attention to what ultimates your teammates have, ask what utility they have left such as shock darts, or tell your teammates who still has your utility up even when you're spectating. That way, you can play for time as much as possible. Number 4. There's no reason why you want to dry peek an operator. Pay attention to the enemy team's economy and see how many credits they have. If you see anything above 5300, try not to dry peek into common angles, but instead, Use shoulder peaks, jump peaks, or utility first for info. And lastly, number five, there's no reason for you to keep trying the same thing over and over again, expecting different outcomes. That's the definition of insanity. You want to constantly adapt and identify the win condition for each round. Oftentimes, people make these simple mistakes because they're playing on autopilot. So I highly recommend that you VOD review yourself to figure out which mistakes you're prone to make in game, so that way you can be more conscious of it as you play. Another way you can avoid autopiloting in your games is this fourth and last strategy that I implemented, which is only playing within the first five hours of waking up. I knew that I'll be able to focus during my games and have the best mental clarity within the first five hours of waking up. This isn't a necessity, but it becomes a lot harder to avoid playing on autopilot when you're physically or mentally exhausted. Playing games when you're tired can also make you very prone to tilting and underperforming. I've been guilty of trying to play while skipping meals or not getting enough sleep, but if you're trying to maximize your win rate, you want to be in the best physical, mental, and emotional state possible. Again, I'm not saying that you have to follow exactly what I did to hit Radiant. This is what helped me make my two-week climb as efficient as possible. One of my students went from Plat to Radiant only playing on the weekends because he was serving in the military Monday through Friday. It obviously took him much longer than two weeks, but he was able to do it by optimizing his playtime. Some of the strategies I went over in this video seem quite obvious, but information is useless without implementation. For example, everyone knows if you want to be healthy, you need to have a clean diet and exercise regularly. But how many people actually apply that knowledge? I hope you take action with the information I shared with you in this video, and if you need any help to speed up your progress, message me the word climb through discord. Thanks for watching.